Hey, I'm Hannah, and welcome back to me doing whatever I want. So, in about five days from the time that I'm recording this, it's going to be my 24th birthday. And after some reflection, weirdly enough, I'd never really thought about age before, and I realized that turning 24 means you're done with your 24th year and starting your 25th year. And so that just set me on a whole new level of freaked out about how old I'm getting. I'm not old, but how old I'm getting because I still feel like I'm 16. So what I wanted to do was make kind of a video time capsule. So future Hannah, I'm talking to you. And all the rest of you are welcome to stay. Um, hang around if you want, but basically what this is going to be is going to be my 24th year recapped. So I have my planner by Magic of Eye, and I think what I'm also going to try to do is if I mention anything in this video, um, or I think of my favorite things from this past year of my life, so like April 9th to April 9th, then I'll put it in the description. So if you want to check any of this stuff out, you can, but this is my planner. It's so old. Um, I mean, it looks old because it's just so beaten up. I don't really know if you can tell. You can definitely tell from that, but it's been through a lot. So I'm just going to go through it and see what I did, you know? Kind of like a read through my memories. So I know that my 24th year on my 23rd birthday started in lockdown in America. I was back in my hometown in New York. Uh, my mom made me a vegan cake. She doesn't really bake, and she's not a vegan, but I am. That was really awesome. So yeah, I was back in New York having a COVID-safe birthday. Um, at the time, I was doing a lot of Zoom calls with my friends, like regularly, almost like three times a week with one group, and then I was watching Sherlock, BBC Sherlock, throwback to 2015, with a couple of my other friends. Um, I had a call, a video call, with some of the people from my nuclear physics REU that I did in Michigan in 2018. That was really, really fun. And I was also rereading the Harry Potter series for the first time since I was a kid. I hadn't read them since I was a kid. So that was a pretty nice April to have to be totally honest. A really good start to my year. And then suddenly, I visited Oneonta where I went to the university. And I think around the first week of May, my friend said to me, um, she said, hey, I'm staying with my uncle in Colorado while this whole COVID thing is happening because she's in a physics PhD program, but she could work remotely because of COVID. And so she was working from Colorado, and she asked me if I wanted to come and stay. So in May, on the 11th, I started driving. It was a three-day trip. I took a rental car, and I met her in Golden, Golden, Colorado. And we stayed there a few days and saw Denver, and then we made the rest of the trip down to Ure. And while I was there, a lot of stuff happened while I was there. Actually, it was really great. Um, beautiful scenery. Hopefully, I'll have some pictures that I can put in here of some of the things that I'm talking about along the way. I went rock climbing once, did the Via Ferrata once, um, went hiking once. <laughs> what else did I do once? We went running one time. <laughs> Just everything one time. And oh my god, okay, I also had to do a tiny surgery on myself because I was walking around in flip-flops because I was deceived into thinking most of the walk would be on a road, but it wasn't. And so we got to the top of this hill and it seemed very empty. And I thought, no big deal. It's fine that I'm wearing these flip-flops. And then all of a sudden there was something stabbing into the side of my foot. It was like the side of the arch of my left foot. I looked down and there's a prickly pear cactus in my foot and three of its little cactus spikes were in the side of the arch of my foot. Hopefully I have a picture of this. I swear to God, it was so bad. And so I cut them. They have like, you know how a fish hook has like spikes? So it's easy to go in, but it has like prongs or whatever. What are they called? It has something to keep it from coming back out, 
right? And there's tons of tiny invisible little ones on the spine of a prickly paracactus. And so I was pulling and pulling and my skin was coming, like it was coming out from my foot, but it the spike wasn't leaving my foot. And so I cut, like I broke the spines off. So there was like a couple millimeters sticking out of my foot. And I was told, just leave it there. Within a day, it'll swell up and become filled with pus and you can squeeze it out. And so I left it overnight. But when I woke up in the morning, I my foot had basically swollen to almost engulf it. So they were almost the spines that used to be sticking out my foot were like becoming enveloped in my foot. And I was like, I have to get these out. So I took a pair of tweezers and a needle and I started digging it out of my foot and it was so <laughs> stupidly painful. It was a tiny surgery and it took an hour and a half to get all three of them out of my foot and I did it by myself. And my, my poor friend was like, <laughs> We stayed in the same loft and I was literally on a couch um, with all my stuff piled like a foot away from me on the floor it was like the living space that we had. Um, and so she was also in the loft and so she was sitting there on the bed pretending like nothing was happening while I was digging into my foot. So uh, that's probably one of the only complete stories that I'm going to tell from my 24th year because it just has to be said. It was just... <laughs> I'll remember it forever, let's put it that way. Um, yes, okay, so also while I was in Colorado, I started putting together the book that I made about my dad's travel letters. So my dad traveled all around the world to, I think, eight different countries, um, including, like, Australia, New Zealand, so, you know, some pretty big, significant ones, like America, Canada, you know, thing places that took a lot of time. Um... In 1991 and 1992. So for that year, he was writing letters home. Obviously, technology was a bit different. Um, and my grandmother had kept saying, like, oh, you should read his letters. They really make you feel like you're right there with him. And in my mind, that was just a really proud mom talking. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. Maybe I will one day. And when I was in Colorado, I finally, having nothing to do because my physics tutoring took a complete nosedive when COVID hit because no one seemed to care about their classes anymore when school started shutting down. Go figure. So I didn't have anything to really do. And I thought, yeah, okay, I'll read them. And she was not wrong. They were incredible letters. I cannot imagine sitting and writing just that much content by hand to ship overseas and hope that it made its way to my parents without getting lost in the mail. It was like, it was really incredible. So I typed it all up. Um, I got the photos as well that my grandma scanned. Um, I edited them to make the, them like, maybe not the resolution better, but just to make them like visually better, I guess. Um, and then I put them on a website and I started doing all of this while I was in Colorado. And so it's just, I have really nice memories of being literally like amongst the mountains down by the river going on nice walks and then coming back to since it was may in colorado it was pretty nice weather um we did get a couple days of snow surprisingly but it melted right away but yeah just beautiful scenery and working on these letters and feeling like i was getting a chance to tell a story that everybody should be able to hear and bringing that back to life for my dad that was really awesome so yeah, that was April and May. I had started falling into a habit of writing in the mornings. Um, not my dad's letters, but just writing in general, uh, drinking a lot of tea, um, playing the ukulele, because I started to finally have hobbies this year of my life for literally the, almost the first time ever. Um, so that's pretty cool. So then we get into June, and that was about midway through June was the end of staying in Colorado and actually my friend bought a tent just a two-person tent and we actually we stayed in an Airbnb I think one night but we camped all the other nights it was five days of driving from Colorado we went east first and then north so kind of skirted through the top of Texas um and I think like Arkansas and stuff and then scooped up through like West Virginia so that was really, really pretty. 
um, and it ended us up in Oneonta where we both went to university and we saw some of our friends and like old professors and that was amazing. And then we celebrated Liva because for a past like year and a half or so, my life has started to kind of incorporate a lot of more pagan practices. So just appreciating the changing of the seasons, celebrating those Sabbaths and also the moon phases kind of guiding new intentions, which sounds kind of hippie, but it really is just a way for me to reevaluate what I should be bringing in and like getting rid of in my life. So I think it's been really nice and that's a lot of why I got this planner. But yeah, so we celebrated Liva and had cookouts and fires and my brother was there living with my parents and I because he was also home from not being sure if he wanted to be at school just like I was. So I spent a lot of time with my brother and it was really nice to be at home with him again and I felt like it was kind of a bonus round for all of us because I never thought when I left home at 18 that all four of us, my parents, my brother and I, would be living in the same house again. So that was really, really cool. Um, we went to the mall a lot for bubble tea and eventually to go to Earthbound and stuff and just look around at the shops. I rarely ever bought anything because I didn't have very much money. I had a transcription job um, for many months, quite a few months, actually, and it was terrible, but it got me some money, so I guess I would do it again if I was basically unemployed. So that went on into July, just a lot of seeing my brother and my brother's boyfriend. Um, we all did a bunch of stuff together. I started reading a lot more. I was done with Harry Potter at this point, and so for me, that was the challenge, was to see if I could incorporate, like, actual reading, like, reading for information, as well as for fun, and yeah, it started going really well, so I was reading a bunch of books about just discussions on race, um, with the whole Black Lives Matter protests and stuff going on, which of course, it's still going on. Okay, so let's see what we did in July. So in July, by July, I already knew that I was moving to England, I can't remember exactly when I planned it. I think I might have even planned it before Colorado. But I had picked October because it was early on in the whole lockdown, pandemic, closing borders thing. I was even going to go to England in May originally. Um, but then COVID kind of happened. And I thought maybe I'd move permanently. So I thought it's probably for the best to take some time and stay at home and think about a permanent move instead of a vacation uh, later once the pandemic, the initial like wave of the pandemic has settled a little. So I already knew I was gonna be moving in October and I only had a handful of months. So I started reducing everything um, that I owned basically, cause I knew in my mind that I didn't have a lot of money to spend on like luggage and I didn't even want really to bring loads of stuff with me. So I was just gonna bring one suitcase, 50 pound weight limit, and as you guys know, I did learn that that was not a lot of things. It was mostly just the bare minimum of the clothes that I constantly wore at home. So yeah, I had to get rid of a lot of stuff. A lot of it's still in New York, but a lot of it I knew I didn't need, so I was trying to let it go. Oh yeah, and then I went to the lake house, um, <laughs> and you'll remember this. There was a fiasco with some kayaks. <laughs> some kayaking that's all I can say but I know you'll know what I mean uh that was funny I'm glad everything's okay with that um yeah it was really nice it was the same friend I stayed with in Colorado her parents have a lake house and they were building like a mini guest house next to it which is gonna be an Airbnb hopefully soon or yeah maybe soon but obviously by this time my friend and I had been like literally living together in the smallest physical space you could possibly fit two people into, whether it was the loft in Colorado or this tiny little house by the lake, for like two months straight, pretty much, including like camping in a tent on the way home. So I, yeah, you know who you are. I love you and that was really fun and I would definitely do it again, but I think you were right. <laughs> 
<laughs> we might have like really come for each other if uh, we'd stayed together for too much longer, so. Okay, so, oh yeah, August, aw. August was good. That was a good month. Um, a couple things happened. So, let me try to get this in order. My dad took a day off of work to help me put titles on all of the photos on the website from his world trip. And it was really fun. It was just really cool. And I was finishing editing everything. I was doing final proofreads of the uh, manuscript. And I had a cover made. The whole nine yards. Like, it was awesome. I got to even trans... Not translated, but you know, I got it turned into an EPUB version so I can make an ebook. Um, and that all started coming together mid-August. And literally the day that my first ever physical copy of the book was supposed to arrive so I could check it, we went to, my dad, my brother, and I went with some family friends to the Adirondacks. And we went for a few days and we hiked around. And I was the slowest hiker you ever did see. And I was also a pain hiking in Colorado with my friend, and I'm always a pain when I go hiking with people, and I'm sorry about that, because I want to go so slowly. I don't understand why people are so fast and so athletic, and it's probably the most ridiculous thing for me to possibly say, because now I'm joining the army. So good luck me. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I can last in a way that uh, is superior to my ability to withstand hiking. So, yeah, and then by the end of the month, I had finished the book, and it was officially available for sale, and I had published something, and my dad's story was out there, and it was all just amazing. Learning to self-publish was really, really, it was really a good experience. I mean, it was so stressful. It was a lot of work. When I get invested in a project that doesn't have a schedule, I want to get it done as soon as possible, because I know it's within my power to make it done soon. So I would literally wake up at six in the morning and I'd be like writing, 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 typing, editing, everything that I could possibly do for as long as I was awake, basically. If I didn't have anything else to be doing, that's what I was doing. Um, besides like some transcriptions, I guess, because I was trying to pay off my credit card debt. And actually by September, before I left in October, I'd paid for my plane ticket and I had basically paid off all my debt too. I mean, you know this future Hannah. My roommate that I was supposed to have in North Carolina never actually came. It wasn't entirely her fault. You know, things just got all mixed up. But because of that, I paid so much in rent. It was two bedrooms and no one else was living there. And I should have just gotten my own place. I knew it. But I was thought I was going to be saving money and I didn't and I paid double. So I had very little money and I did not get my stimulus check and I still have not gotten my stimulus check because they still have not processed my 2019 tax return. But you remember that, Hannah, because that's stressful. So anyway, September was the month that I was able to clear my finances. So that was a breath of fresh air for everybody. But it's only thanks to my parents for letting me live in their house like a 16 year old. So thank you, mom and dad. I love you guys. Um, so yeah, September, I was just getting ready to move, and that's when I got the idea for the army, because I knew I didn't want to go to graduate school. I don't really like academia, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't seen people who are, like, happy and not trying to compete with people in academia as graduate students, and, I mean, this, the advisors can be nice, you know. It's a touchy environment, and if you can handle that, that's awesome. But I can't. Uh, not fun for me. You know, literally one girl who was at my interviews for grad school with me, she was asking the stu graduate student panels, are you happy? And they basically deflected the question every time. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, that's not good. Um, so yeah, I was looking up ways to try to do medical imaging and physics, medical physics, without having to pay to go to school. And turns out they don't really want unqualified people who vaguely know physics to be running medical equipment and imaging machines. Go figure. 
So I thought, how the heck am I going to be able to pursue this if I don't want to pay any more money? I still have a little bit of student loans left. I don't want more student loans. Like, what am I going to do? And I fi found the page for radiographer and the British Army, and I read it, and I t immediately was blasted to the past where I was thinking about how I used to want to go to West Point, and I was like, there's got to be a reason why I've always been drawn to the Army, but I never wanted to join in America because it's such a divisive topic. Like, is America too militant? Yes. Or like, is it for the good of the country? Do we really need to be involved? Blah, blah, blah. So I kind of put it in the back of my mind, but seeing it and knowing that I could join a medical team that was doing kind of something for the greater good through the British army, um, which to me felt a little more neutral. If it sounded good. So that's really when it started to become a real idea in my brain. So I kind of decided that's what I was gonna do. And so then I had October, basically, to start figuring out how I needed to apply. I figured out that I couldn't really apply until I was living in the UK because they wanted my phone number and they were gonna do everything by phone. But although I could have had my US number and given it to them, I didn't have international calling and they didn't have a way to put an international number on the application. And I just thought, I'll be there soon enough. I'll apply when I'm there because then I can also get my uh, medical records to a GP that they can access and communicate with. So it was all going to be better. So I put that on hold. I basically spent October enjoying time with my parents and my brother, my brother's boyfriend, um, seeing my friends for one last time. I went to Skinny Atlas with my mom, and I went to Salem and Boston with my dad, and I have to say, October was like the best time for my last embracing of New York slash New England. It was so beautiful. Um, I'm really glad I waited that long, just so I could see it all again in the fall, to be totally honest. If you ever get the chance, well, I guess if you, anybody else who's for some reason watching this, ever get the chance, you should definitely go to New England and New York in October. Seriously. It's too nice to miss. Like, you have to see it at least once. Um, and then also, future Hannah, I hope you've been back. So I think that's the rest of my notes for 2020. And that's fine because getting here, so I got here, as some of you guys know, I had to go into quarantine for two weeks. It was already November by the time that I got out of quarantine, but then the whole entire country went into lockdown and it hasn't left lockdown really since. We went into the tier system for a time, but that didn't really change anything. So I've basically just been, basically been more or less in Stratford and the surrounding areas. I haven't done a lot of touristy things. Things haven't been open Restaurants haven't been open the entire time that I've been here. I've gotten some takeaway, but that's pretty much it. I've had a good rest of, I had a good rest of 2020. Um, I spent Christmas with my cousins and my grandparents and my aunt and uncle, who I never really spent Christmas with before. I mean, I spent Christmas with my grandparents before, I think, when I was really little, maybe. But it was my first Christmas with more than just, like, my parents and my brother, basically, which was weird but good I mean it really felt like a fam like a family holiday you know instead of just like a day where you wake up all the same people are in your house and somebody bought you presents which was always great growing up um because I really liked getting presents but yeah that was a really cool experience it's been really interesting to meet my family at the age of 23 um it's been cool. It's been really interesting. I lived most of my whole life not really feeling like I had a family, just knowing that as a fact I had a family. So it's been cool. 2020 was a good year for that. Two days before Christmas, I got my assessment date, February 16th. So basically the whole new year was just me wishing it would snow, not getting any snow, and then going to my assessment. And... I crushed it. I was so happy with how I did, part mostly because they literally told me I should be happy, and I got a phone call a couple days later just to remind me 
what a good job I did. I was so floored and so flattered and so honored and yeah, it was awesome. I'll have to make that assessment center video soon because I kept saying I was going to, but I've been losing the motivation. So yeah, let's keep skipping forward. Basically just army training, army training, lockdown, 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 running. That's pretty much all I've been doing in this whole 2021. Got on universal credit for a while, had to look for jobs, and then I also crushed my interview to be a radiographer on the 3rd of March. I was one of two people who got accepted to start as, uh, like, radiographers in training in September at Birmingham City University, and that was also very much an honor. Um, I had no idea it was gonna be that competitive. The interview process was fairly rigorous. Um, it definitely was no joke and neither were the assessments. So I'm really proud of that. Definitely really proud of that. Yeah, I guess I, you know, I won't go into too much detail because I think this is enough for you, future me, to remember all of this, all the stuff that happened around that. Um, being at my uncle's, for the interview was really nice. He lives in a converted old convent, so the architecture was amazing. Um, he's in Hereford, so the town was cute. The hills around where he lives were awesome. Really nice to run on, really scenic. Yeah, that basically just brings us to here. I have been doing a book club with same friend, Colorado friend, Oneonta friend, you know, university friend and lake house friend and everything. So, because I found the podcast Harry Potter and the Sacred Text, and I really loved the way that they read the book through different themes for each chapter and just really tried to take some life lessons away from it. And I felt like I could really use that, and I loved the podcast, and when I sent it to my friend, who I also got to read Harry Potter, she said, let's do it. Let's do that too. So, we do a discussion on eat one chapter at a time of Harry Potter um, about three times a week. And we've been doing this since December and we're on the third book. And hopefully that's gonna get finished by the time I go to training, but I wouldn't know before my birthday, would I? So yeah, that's been really, really fun. It's been a really interesting, really slow, but really fast, really stagnant, but really life-changing year. It's not one that I would change if I could. I think a lot of it's been unpleasant, a lot of it's been very pleasant, uh, a lot of it's been really relaxing. I think I've been pretty anxious for one reason or another um, for most of my life, and obviously this year has been no real exception, but I think on the whole, I've been able to relax again, perhaps even too far. Okay, tell me, future Hannah, do you ever recover from just feeling like you never want to go back out into society again? Because I feel like every time that I start mixing with people, even remotely, in society, even though, like, we legally can't even mix that much, so it's very limited exposure, um, I just start thinking, like, why would I ever want to do this <laughs> on a large scale? Like, why would I do this to myself? Um, so hopefully you don't feel that way, future me. And you like people again. That will be, that would be, maybe that'll be my goal for my 25th year. So I think it'd be cool to wrap this up in two ways. The first way is I'm going to try to put a bunch of my random favorite things in the description because I don't really want to sit here and list them all off and I don't think I would remember them all off the top of my head anyway. So all the stuff that I did and really enjoyed um, and all the content that I really liked and all that stuff, I'm going to put it down there. Um, and then I think I want to wrap this up with maybe a message to myself and maybe what I expect. Oh, this is, okay, this is making me really nervous. Um, I don't think that there's anything specific I want to say to myself. You know, I would like to congratulate me. Good job, you. I think finally getting some hobbies. Reading, keeping up with your French, you know, just writing in the mornings with a cup of tea, 
uh, earlier last year, playing the ukulele and running and meditating and yoga. Oh yeah, I've done a lot of yoga this year. It's just all been good. It's been really good. I read so many books. <laughs> Probably about 15, which isn't really that many when you think about it. Um, 15 in a year, that's pretty average. But for me, compared to the past, that's a lot. You moved in the middle of a pandemic. That's pretty cool. And nothing even went wrong. Like, how lucky is that? That's awesome. You, oh, also gained back like eight to 10 pounds of weight that you lost that you shouldn't have lost by going to the gym. So yes, I'm proud about that too. So I don't know, this turned into, this turned from what was supposed to be a message to myself saying that I'm proud of me <laughs> to just like me bragging about things for a solid few minutes there. Um, to get back on track, I'm starting my 25th year when I turn 24. Like I said, I think that's really trippy. But in my 25th year, what do I want? I'm going to go to training and I want to stand out. I don't expect that it will be easy or even possible for me to keep up with a bunch of the guys who are going to be there. But I want to be so obviously putting in my best effort and so obviously achieving what I should be achieving and then a little more that that's just how people come to know me. And that's what people associate with my name or seeing me. I expect and hope that I can set those standards for myself as I'm meeting these people and I'm trying to find my place in a team and trying to earn my rank among an established, basically, institution of people who just work hard all the time. I'm so excited to go back to school. I hope that you're really enjoying it, future me. Uh, I expect to have the same attitude that I have in training at school. I expect to perform even better at school in Birmingham than I did in Oneonta. And I expect to just be really passionate about it. I've never felt uninspired by medical imaging. I've always felt that it's really cool. And I expect that being part of the army while doing it all will give me even more of a sense of it being cool and important, you know. Oh, I also started a blog through an organization called Graduate Planet who has a website with Earthwise. And I basically write about environmental education stuff. So if you like the environment, or you don't want the planet to die, or you don't want the human race to die, you can check out that blog and see what I've been learning about. And I just have really loved it. It's volunteer work. I hope to keep it up when I'm at university, once I'm out of training, because obviously I won't be able to do it while I'm in training um, with the army. But I've really, really enjoyed it. I think it's really rounding off all the things I'm putting my effort towards. So that's been really good. Sorry if I shifted. I had to make sure you guys were still with me because it would have been really awkward if I had said all this stuff and then had to re-say it again. So yeah, I just, I just expect to be trying really hard and to be enthusiastic about the things that I'm doing. And I expect to continue practicing the things that I've been practicing, like meditation, mindfulness and yoga stuff and some of these little pieces that I've picked from pagan practices if that's not a tongue twister for you um I expect to keep doing those so that I can keep myself balanced I think it's really really balancing self-reflection sort of act so yeah um I'm really glad that you stuck with me through that and I know it was just me monologuing but I'm glad I did it I was really starting to get anxious about whether or not I would actually sit down and do this. So, yeah, I'm glad I did. I think it'll be really fun for me to look back on, and I hope that if some of you stuck through this, that it was fun for you to look back on with me. So thank you, and I will talk to you when I am older than 23. <laughs>